It's the Evening Rancor, the daily podcast from that guy who talks about stuff, John Ford. Any links mentioned on the show are available at johnford.radio. Today, we're coming to you direct from your mom's basement. Welcome to the Evening Rancor, the John Ford podcast. The show is on! johnford.radio Well, here we go again. It's the Evening Ranker, the John Ford Podcast number 16. Glad to have you along for another exciting and thrilling day here on the John Ford Podcast. Be careful how you use it. I think today we're just going to take one of those lovely weaving jaunts around what's happening in the news. N-E-W-S. And how the hell could I talk about news without talking about this, which just crossed the wires? Our long national nightmare is finally over. Either that or it's uh, just begun. Kanye West has just been involved in, I guess what you would call a news conference in the Oval Office with, and I still can't bring myself to say this, President Trump. Sometimes I feel like I'm living in a Simpsons episode. According to some of the reports that we're hearing, according to some of the reports that we're hearing, Kanye used the mother forker word in the Oval Office. Probably not the first time it's been used. If I remember correctly, uh, Nixon was uh, supposed to have had a horrible, awful potty mouth. I totally disagree with this permissive philosophy. So I'm sure words worse than that have been done, and I'm sure that uh, certain things have been done in the Oval Office that would probably, you know, beat that anyways. That's wrong, and I'm working to stop it. Anyways, Kanye was in the Oval Office and uh, gave a quick little press conference as uh, the photogs snapped their pictures. Here, let's, let's, let's. Let's listen in. It's not that I don't like what I what I need Saturday Night Live to improve on or what I need the liberals to improve on is if he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest planes, the best factories. And we have to make our core be in power. We have to bring jobs into America because our best export is entertainment and ideas. But when we make everything in China and not in America, then we're cheating on our country. And we're putting people in positions to have to do illegal things to end up in the cheapest factory ever, the, uh, the prison system. We sure have come a long way from, you know, Nixon and Elvis in the Oval Office, haven't we? I don't know much about Kanye West anyways, other than that he's popular and has a name that people recognize and he does rap music. It was just dumb. Outside of that, I, I don't know anything about him. I, I sort of, you know, I'm an old guy and I sort of miss that whole rap thing. I just never really got into it. It just, you know, wasn't my thing. There was a couple of them I liked. There was a band called the Disposable Heroes of Hypocrisy. I thought they were kind of interesting. I don't, I don't know Kanye from The Man on the Moon. <laughs> You're so weird. Kid Rock also went into the White House today. I guess he was there as well. On his way in, this is kind of amusing, on his way into the, into the White House as he was walking through the uh, vestibule, as it were, into the Oval Office, I guess somebody from the press pool, you know, shouted out, uh, should the president fire Sessions? And Kid Rock said back, I don't know Kid Rock either from the man in the moon. I mean, he just, you know, looks like he'd be one of my redneck southern relatives. But outside of that, I just don't know his stuff, man. Heck. Anything that's beyond the contemporary of Blind Lemon Jefferson, I really don't know much about. So anyways, they asked him if uh, Sessions should be fired, and he shouted back, No, he should fire you. I mean, the world is so bizarre, man. We've got this reality show president having rap stars and pseudo-rock stars coming into the Oval Office uh, to give him advice or whatever. So that, I don't know, so that he looks contemporary, I guess. It's just a bizarro world, man. Outside of that, I just don't know what to say about it. Other than the fact that it, I feel sometimes, and maybe you do too, uh-huh, that we've entered like this parallel universe. We've, we've split off from what used to be reality and have entered this parallel timeline, which, which is completely and utterly bonkers. And in other news today, I don't know if you saw the story the other day. I think it was uh, yesterday or the day before that uh, I think it was at the Hollywood Bowl. It was in L.A. They had a hologram concert, and the hologram was none other than uh, former traveling Wilbury, Roy Orbison. So you got to watch this, like, 90-minute concert with Roy Orbison on the stage as a hologram. Now, news comes today 
that the next hologram concert is going to be, uh, of course, you, I guess you have to do this with dead people, is going to be Amy Winehouse. Well, I, what would be the point of doing it with live people? Uh, but there are so many no-talent live hacks out there that shouldn't be singers or superstars in the first place. At least Amy Winehouse could actually sing, right? And she has some talent. Really kind of skanky, but she had a lot of talent. You all ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Anyway, so she's going to be returning to the stage as a hologram. So if you never got the chance to see her live, you can now not go see her live again. But this time it will be a hologram of her singing, uh, whose untimely death at the age of 27 in 2011 shook the music world. 27 seems to be the age when rock stars who go at it in excess seem to kick the bucket. I guess Maria Callas also was uh, done as a hologram as well, but that's not really a rock star. The Winehouse hologram will be projected on stage in front of a live band that will accompany the voice from her original recordings. Well, then why not just listen to a CD and look at a couple of pictures? Seems to me that probably all this is about is being able to make a couple of bucks for whoever owns her royalties and rights. That's just me saying that because (laughs) I never give anybody the benefit of the doubt. The Orbison hologram has played 15 dates in Europe and is currently on a uh, U.S. tour of more than 20 cities. If you would have told these guys that they could be touring and making money for their families after they were long dead, they would have never, ever have believed it. According to the article from Yahoo.com, the Winehouse family will have final approval over the show. Yeah, it might be more interesting if they did it, you know, made it a little bit more realistic, where she's chugging Jack Daniels on stage snorting up a few lines and popping a few opioids while she's on stage. I bet they'd sell more tickets that way. I'm a bad girl. And now from the If I Have to Tell You Once, I'm Gonna Have to Tell You 173,000 Times department comes this. Don't pick your nose. No picking your nose and no playing with little Mr. Peabody. According to British scientists, there's one more reason you shouldn't pick your nose. You might end up with the pneumonia. According to this AFP story, the bacteria that causes pneumonia, a lung condition that will prove deadly if left untreated, that's right, is known to spread through airborne droplets, often from the coughs and sneezes of infected individuals. Parents, exasperated by their children, constantly ignoring the pleas to get their stinking finger from up their nose, have finally found an argument to break the habit. It might give you pneumonia. How is this going to be an argument that's going to stop kids from picking their noses? I mean, kids think they're indestructible anyways. Probably the least destructible thing they're going to be doing is jamming their knuckles up their nose, for God's sakes. I would rather stick my nose in the deep fryer. You know, when you're 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, you don't think anything's going to ever get you. Much less sticking your finger up your nose. No. According to these British scientists, it was published in the Respiratory Journal of Europe... A group of adult volunteers had the bacteria applied to their hands, and I would imagine were told to shove their fingers up their nose. (laughs) According to the scientist, it might not be realistic to get children to stop picking, poking, and rubbing their noses, she said, but for parents ensuring good hand hygiene. And as we know, the British love good hand hygiene. Johnny liked to use his hands too much. I like hands and fingers. And cleaning of toys and surfaces would likely reduce transmission and reduce the risk of developing pneumococcal infections such as pneumonia. Participants in the study were just as likely to get the bacteria in their noses whether they were exposed to wet or dry pneumococcus samples. Man, I just love saying pneumococcus. That's a lot of fun. (laughs) So don't pick your nose. Tell your kids not to pick their noses. Send them out on their motorcycles Tell them to go jump on the metal angles at the playground and buy them a trampoline. But for God's sakes, keep them safe and keep those knuckles out of their noses. This program is for re-educational purposes only. Resemblance to real persons, living or dead, is probably intentional. Contents under pressure, use only as directed, some assembly required. Void where inhibited, batteries not included, use only as directed. If confusion persists, consult your physician. Driver does not carry cash, this disclaimer is subject to change without notice. I'm the happiest guy. He's the luckiest guy. Cause I just bought a new Ford. From a wonderful dealer. Wow, what a dealer. For a Ford or a fine used car. If we don't tap into all that nastiness out there, somebody else will. And then they'll be the ones getting the blowout ratings while we're sitting around doing responsible programming and getting four listeners. John Ford, 
Radio. What a car, what a price, what a dealer, wasn't he nice? For a brand new Ford or a fine used car, here is the dealer, take our advice. 